welcome to Pammy Plus Parks. I am Pammy, your plus size fairy godmother, bringing you all the magic Universal, Disney, and Florida have to offer plus size people. And today I'm at Universal Studios Orlando getting ready to ride Men in Black. This ride is totally new for me, but I'm gonna look into it a little bit and get you some information on how to ride this comfortably as a plus size person or a person who has accessibility or mobility concerns. I'll get you information about strollers and children and photo sensitivity as well. Let's get started. First things first, let's take a look at the Men in Black Alien Attack Warning Board. This ride puts Men in Black recruits on the city streets for a training exercise. The movements of the ride vehicle include sudden acceleration, turning, and spinning. If you have the following conditions, you should not ride. Heart conditions or abnormal blood pressure, back, neck, or similar physical conditions, expectant mothers, motion sickness or dizziness, medical sensitivity to strobe effects, medical sensitivity to fog effects, recent surgery or other conditions that may be aggravated by this ride. Guests under 42 inches may not ride. Children between 42 inches and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. Guests may remain in a standard wheelchair throughout. Guests using electronic convenience vehicles, ECBs, please see the attendant for assistance. This ride does not accommodate service animals. Okay. Okay, you can take your wheelchair or ECB through the queue of this line. If you have a stationary wheelchair, you can actually ride the ride in that. If you're riding in an ECB, you need to be able to drive it about three feet away from the vehicle, get up, walk to the vehicle, and transfer into the vehicle. I did check to see if there was any special seating for people of size or any special accommodation seating, bench seating, anything like that, and there's not. In fact, this ride does not have a tester vehicle because it's expected that people of many different sizes will fit. So I'm gonna try this ride for you. But first, I actually have to go stow my bag. There are no bags allowed on this ride and they provide free lockers to stow your bag in. And as always, no filming inside of Universal Studios rides. Now Universal does provide free standard size lockers for your bags but they charge you $3 for every 30 minutes after, up to a maximum of $20 to rent these lockers. They have large lockers available for really big bags and they charge you $2 while you ride or $3 for every 30 minutes after to a maximum of $20. Let's see if my bag will fit in a standard locker. Okay, so in order to get a locker number, you scan your barcode on the back of your ticket. All right, let's go ahead and scan the barcode and see what locker number we get. It says locker number 18. Let's find it. Okay, this locker just popped open. It is rather small, just to show you, but I think my bag will fit. Standard size backpack seems to fit okay, but you're also supposed to put loose change, cell phones, and cameras in here, so I'm gonna do that right now. The one thing you wanna be sure you don't put in your locker, your ticket. You're gonna need your ticket to get your bag back out. I found myself a slice of shade and a Powerade, and it's time to talk Men in Black. I'm not saying the ride is good, but I did ride it twice in a row. I have to tell you, I really, really, really loved this ride. It was fantastic. I was a little nervous getting on because I did do single rider. The single rider line was only five minutes long. And generally when you're a single rider, you're the last person to get on the ride vehicle. So you usually end up on the end of the row, which is where I generally am most comfortable as a plus size person because I feel like I'm not squashed up against someone. So single rider works really well when you're by yourself and you're a plus size person. 
let's talk about the ride vehicle. Each vehicle has two rows. Each row has three seats. Each seat has its own individual lap bar. If you're a very tall person, the back row is your best bet. That's because the back row actually, um, the seats are a little higher. The seats in the back row are almost as high as a bar stool, a little bit lower than that. Even though I'm five foot four with really short legs, I didn't have to hop up onto it. I backed up to the seat, rested my butt against the seat, and then in front of me on the floor was an angled panel that I could put my feet on. So I leaned into the chair, put my feet on that, and popped my booty right up on the seat. If you're a super tall person, you're not gonna wanna use that foot pad, but if you're shorter, like I am, you'll wanna rest your feet there. I was very comfortable. Now the first seat in the car, if you are the first person in line to get on the ride, and you're seated all the way to the first seat, that seat has like a wall or a barrier that will be right up against your left side of your body. So if you're a larger person, you'll be squashed up against that, and the person next to you will be squashed up against you. What I recommend that you do is, if you are a single rider or if you're the third person getting on the ride, ask if you can sit on the very end of the row. That would mean you'd be the last person getting on the ride. The last seat on the row has a, um, an armrest. It's a metal tube armrest that's open on the side. So because that side is open, if you have a larger hip, it's gonna stick through that, give you a little more room. Now the seats themselves are almost like individual bucket seats that are cupped a little bit. So there's a ridge on the side that might stick into the back of your hip like it did for me, but it's cushioned and I didn't find it very uncomfortable at all. In fact, once the ride started, I totally forgot about it completely. So it wasn't uncomfortable for me. The floor of the ride vehicle is even with the platform, so you don't have to step up or step down, you just walk directly onto the ride. I found this very easy to board. Let's talk about the lap bars. The lap bars are kind of like a glide and lock system, except they do click. They're not big clicks like you see on some lap bars where it goes click, click, click down. They're like mini clicks, like click, 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 click. So there's lots of range in that, lots of room for it to come down. First time that I rode, I pushed it down as far down as I could possibly get it. I was still very comfortable and I felt very secure. Um, there's a lot of range of motion in there. I could have been a much larger person and still had no problem fitting with that lap bar at all. The second time I rode, I decided not to push down quite as hard, and I think that was a mistake. I think you really do need to make sure that that lap bar is pressed right against the top of your belly. Not super hard, but it needs to be there, right on top of it. Because I had a little tiny bit of a gap, I did feel like I was sliding around a little bit. So I would recommend to make sure that that lap bar is comfortable yet secure. Now, for someone my height, five foot four inches, I found no difference from sitting in the back row to the front row in the two different vehicles that I rode in. They felt exactly the same to me. The ride felt the same, the seats felt the same. I felt just as secure in one seat as I did the other. Had a really comfortable, safe feeling ride. I do want to mention in the queue, there are stairs that um, go down into the boarding area and then after you exit the ride, you have to go up the stairs. There's an elevator that you can take. People who are in ECVs and wheelchairs can use that or you can use it if you just don't feel comfortable going up and down the stairs. Keep this in mind because after you get off the ride, you might feel a little discombobulated because there is spinning in the ride and you might not feel comfortable walking up a flight of stairs. You might prefer to take an elevator. You can do so if you need to. Let's talk about the ride itself. I love this ride. Imagine Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger spin on steroids. <laughs> yeah, this is an interactive game where you get to shoot aliens. And the aliens are so cool looking. They look just like the ones from the Men in Black movies. You have a really cool ray gun that you shoot. You score points just like you would in any interactive game. It's so much fun. Aliens come at you from every direction. 
but you need to keep in mind that although you're on a track like you would be and you have some spinning like you would be in a Disney style ride, this one is a lot faster track, it moves much quicker, and the spinning is much, much more intense. If you have any back or neck issues whatsoever, I would not recommend this ride to you simply because the spinning is so intense. If you have motion sickness, again, this one is not for you. If you have photosensitivity issues or epilepsy like my husband does, not a ride for you. There's a lot of flashing lights and sort of fog effects and things like that that will really mess with you. But if you're in pretty good physical condition, doesn't matter what size you are, whether or not you're in an ECV or wheelchair, if your spine's in good shape and you don't have any motion sensory issues or sensory issues, this is going to be a fantastic ride that you will love. It is an intense ride. It is not for everyone, but you know, I just absolutely loved it. I thought it was super, super cool. I loved it so much that as soon as I got off, I was like, oh, man, I gotta get back on that ride again. And went right back into single rider again and went right on it again. I loved it. I, I'm really looking forward to getting on this ride again and again in the future. I hope you found the information in this video really useful and it helps you make a decision about whether or not this ride is for you. Thanks for joining me on Men in Black. We're the Avasovic from Pennsylvania. Life's a roller coaster. Enjoy the ride!